Welcome to section 3.6. So gentle people, I want to warn you, this might be a lecture that runs a little bit long and there was no real good place to break this lecture up. So I apologize beforehand, but bear with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this exercise where we can determine the empirical formula from the percent composition. Now, what I want you guys to understand is that a very powerful technique in industry and research is something called elemental analysis. What you'll do is you'll take a sample and you'll burn that sample up with oxygen. And what you can do is you can determine the percentage of each element inside that compound. So let's go ahead and pretend that we just discovered this new acid, ascorbic acid. So like a good chemist, I'm going to send it off to the lab and I'm going to get its percent composition. And so what the instrument is going to return to me is it's going to tell me the content of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And what I want to do is find the empirical formula and the molecular formula from this data. So here are the steps that we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume we have 100 grams of this substance. Now, I could have picked any number. I could have picked 1 gram. I could have picked 10 grams. I could have picked 3.14159. It doesn't matter. The only reason that I picked 100 grams, because in the next step, I want to write the grams of each element. And if I assume 100 grams, all I have to do is just take out the percentage signs and I get 40.92 grams, 4.58 grams, and 54.5 grams. If you kept it at 1 gram, 0 0.4092, 0 0.0458, and 0 0.5450 grams. And it doesn't matter which route you take, you'll get the same answer. But for now, 100 makes life easier, so that's what I'm going to stick to. Now that I've assumed that I have 100 grams, and I calculate the amount of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in grams, I want to try to get the empirical formula first. Now remember what the empirical formula is. An empirical formula is the lowest ratio between each element in my chemical compound. Now if I want to ratio things, that means I have to count each one of my constituents in my chemical compound. Well, how do we count in chemistry? Well, chemists count in moles. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert each one of these grams into moles. So what I'm going to do is first take the grams of carbon. I'm going to look on the periodic table and I see that carbon weighs 12.01 grams per mole. So I'm going to put grams on the bottom, moles up top, the grams cancel out, and then I will count the number of carbons, in this case, 3.40. I'm going to do the same with hydrogen and oxygen, looking on the periodic table for their respective weights. Now, I want you guys to be careful. So oxygen, you need the atomic weight of oxygen. Don't confuse this with O2. I'm talking about oxygen atoms. Now, once we do all of this, what you guys will see is that I can go ahead and ratio this. So if I were to look at my carbon to hydrogen to oxygen ratio, well, that would be 3.407 to 4.54 to 3.406. Or in other words, I can go ahead and write C 3.407, H 4.54, and oxygen 3.406. Now, this is going to make Dalton very unhappy. What you guys will notice is I have fractional atoms. And what Dalton said, and, and we're going to use this theory here, is that we cannot break an atom. There's no such thing as a 0.407 atom. So what I need to do is I need to try to get whole numbers. Now, the way that we get whole numbers is we are going to look at the lowest number we have. So again, here are our moles that we calculated out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the lowest number of moles and I'm going to divide everything by that moles. So if I divide 3.407 by 3.406, I get about 1. 
4.54 divided by that same 3.406, I get about 1.33. And then anything divided by itself is one. Now I'm gonna give you guys a tip. If you get some number 0.9, go ahead and round that up. If you get some number 0.1, you guys can go ahead and round that down. For example, I think this calculated out to 1.00029, and so I'm gonna round that down to one because it's close enough. If you get any other number, make sure you guys go ahead and double check your calculation or do what we do in the next step. So again, we have our carbon, our hydrogen, and our oxygen ratio. We get one, to 1.33 to one. And so I can write this as carbon one, hydrogen 1.33, and then oxygen one. Now again, I have made Dalton very upset. I have one and a third of an atom here. And so after you do this division by the lowest number of moles, the next step you're gonna do is see if you can multiply by some integer to try to get to whole numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply each one of these numbers by three. So for carbon, one times three is three. For hydrogen, 1.33 times three is going to be about four. And oxygen, one times three is three. And so what I get out of this is I get my empirical formula for ascorbic acid. Now, what I want you guys to do is remember the empirical formula is different from the molecular formula. The empirical formula is the lowest ratio in my compound. The molecular formula is gonna tell you exactly how many carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens are in my formula. So this one can be C3H4O3. It can be double this amount, so C6H8O6. It can be triple this amount, so C9H12O9. And I can go on, so on, and so forth. So let's go ahead and see if I can solve this issue. Now to solve this, I need one more piece of information. And so I'm gonna go into lab and I'm gonna do one more experiment. And what that experiment is gonna tell me is it's going to tell me the formula weight or the molar mass of ascorbic acid. So in this second experiment that I run, I find out that ascorbic acid is 176 atomic mass units. Now with that information, I can go ahead and do the calculation. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my empirical formula and calculate the formula weight for this empirical formula. And so three times 12, because I have three carbons, four times one, because I have four hydrogens, and three times 16, because I have three oxygen, that tells me that the empirical formula weight is going to be 88.0 atomic mass units. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the molecular formula and you're going to get its molar mass and you're going to divide that by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So in this case, the molar mass or the formula weight for ascorbic acid, the whole thing, the molecular formula is 176. I just calculated how much the empirical formula weighs and that's 88 atomic mass units. Now, if you do this calculation out, we get two. What that is saying is the molecular formula is twice as heavy as the empirical formula, meaning there are two empirical formulas inside the molecular formula. So I'm gonna take my empirical formula and I'm gonna times every number by two. Now, if I do that, you guys will see that C3 becomes C6, H4 becomes H8, and O3 becomes O6. So this is the molecular formula for ascorbic acid. 
gentle people, we have done a lot of converting back and forth. So what I want you guys to do is get real comfortable. I want you guys to get comfortable going from grams to moles, moles to molecules, and back and forth. Now, if you have to break up the molecule, get comfortable getting atoms out of there. So on the bottom, here's how we do our empirical formula. Remember, we can work backwards to get to our percent composition. I want you to get real comfortable going back and forth and how you would transition from one of these quantities to another. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and do a quiz. So I'm going to tell you guys that there is this tasty, tasty antifreeze in most people's garages. So ethylene glycol is antifreeze. So here is the percent composition of antifreeze. I'm also giving you guys the molar mass of antifreeze. And what I want you to do is calculate the molecular formula. Now, I'll let you guys know there's a couple ways to do this problem. I'm going to show you two ways to tackle this problem. So what I want you guys to do is see if you can come up with two different routes to get the molecular formula. All right, gentle people, I'm going to go over the first method, which is going to parallel what I just showed you in the rest of the lecture. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assume we have 100 grams. If we have 100 grams of material, I have 38.7 grams of carbon, I have 9.7 grams of hydrogen, and 51.6 grams of oxygen. So the first route is I'm going to try to first determine my empirical formula. Empirical formula means count, so that means I'm going to try to get how chemists count. I'm going to change everything to moles. So this is going to be times one mole per 12.01 grams of carbon. And remember, the 12.01 comes from my periodic table. This turns out to be 3.22 moles of carbon. One mole of hydrogen is equivalent to 1.008 grams of hydrogen. And so this gets me 9.62 moles of hydrogen. Lastly, oxygen on the periodic table, 16 grams of oxygen is equivalent to one mole of oxygen. This gets me 3.23 moles of oxygen. So what I get here is carbon 3.22 Hydrogen, 9.62. Oxygen, 3.23. Again, Dalton is very unhappy with me because I have fractional atoms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by the smallest amount. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each one of these numbers by 3.22. So 3.22 moles of carbon divided by 3.22. Well, that's just going to be one mole of carbon. 9.62 moles of hydrogen divided by 3.22. Well, that's about 2.99 moles of hydrogen. And I'm going to round that up to three moles of hydrogen. And then lastly, oxygen. 3.23 moles of oxygen divided by 3.22. You guys can see that this is going to round to one mole of oxygen. So this gets me CH3O. So CH3O, we can go ahead and calculate its weight. So that's going to be 12.01 for carbon. There are three hydrogens each at 1.008 plus oxygen, that gets me 31.02 AMU, or we can go ahead and say that an AMU is a gram per mole. So 31.02 grams per mole. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and take the weight of my actual substance and divide it by the weight of that empirical formula. And what I get is about two. So that means that I'm going to go ahead and take my empirical formula and times everything by 2. So C2H6O2. And so this 
is the empirical formula for antifreeze. All right, gentle people, I told you there was a couple ways to do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second way that we could have attempted this problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it out with the molar mass. So the molar mass is 62.1 grams of antifreeze per one mole of antifreeze. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna times this by the percent composition. I know that for a hundred grams of antifreeze, I'm gonna have 38.7 grams of carbon. So this comes from the percent composition. Again, I just chose a hundred. If you wanna go ahead, you could have made this one gram of antifreeze per zero 0.387 grams of carbon. Either one will work and you guys can see it will cancel out in the end of the problem. But then what I know is that a mole of carbon is going to equal 12.001 grams of carbon. And this is from the periodic table. So what I can do is I can start canceling things out. Grams of antifreeze cancel out with grams of antifreeze. Grams of carbon cancel out with grams of carbon. And what I'm left with is I'm left with two moles of carbon are in one mole of antifreeze. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for hydrogen. So for hydrogen, we're gonna still start out with this idea, 61 grams of antifreeze equals one mole of antifreeze. And in this case, 9.7 grams of hydrogen is in 100 grams of antifreeze. Again, that comes from my percent composition. And that one mole of hydrogen weighs 1.008 grams of hydrogen. Again, we'll do our canceling out. Grams of hydrogen, grams of hydrogen, grams of antifreeze, grams of antifreeze. And what I get is 5.98 moles of hydrogen are in one mole of antifreeze. And I can round this up to six. Now you guys can do the last one yourself and see if you can follow that methodology. But at the end of the day, what you guys will do is you should get two moles of oxygen per one mole of antifreeze. And what you guys will notice, these numbers right here look familiar. What I'm saying here is that if I were to take a mole of antifreeze or a molecule of antifreeze, there would be two carbons there would be six hydrogens, and there would be two oxygens. And what you can see is this directly gets you the molecular formula. You can check back in method one. We got the same molecular formula for antifreeze. Well, Chem1A, I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe.